Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak, just feed my fish. Uh, when I feed my fish I use a little scoop and this gives me more control over how much food is going into the aquarium and how much they're eating in a day. So this is, uh, let's see, 0.4 milliliters of food and I put four of these into the aquarium so the fish can eat it. And uh, that way you don't overfeed and feed more than what the fish need. In this video, I want to ask a question. Now, you always hear people, they say, my nitrates are up to 40 parts per million and I have no algae problems. And that's very true. They possibly can have zero algae problems. All tanks have a little bit of algae, but uh, they could have a little bit of brown algae, or they could have a little bit of spot algae. These are things that shouldn't be worrisome because that means your aquarium or a natural system is doing well. That's how limnologists judge how a system is doing. It's by reading the different kinds of algae that are in the pond or the lake or whatever, and they can tell whether it's going uh, uh, ethropic or not. And, of course, the pollution levels. But one way to tell it is the algaes. So algaes are going to form, especially sometimes on your older leaves and all. So this is common. This, this shouldn't bother you as long as it's not getting out of control. But anyway, I was thinking about that, that uh, I've even had people comment in my comment section, well, I don't need an oxy filter because, you know, my... my Nitrates are 40 parts per million. I don't have any problems. And that's very true. They're not lying. I've seen it happen. But some people have used like the anoxy filtration system or a plenum, slow moving plenum or just a plenum or whatever. And all of a sudden they start coming up with getting some beard algae or a little brown algae. They start coming up with and right away they're asking why? Why am I coming out? I did the research um, years ago with a chemist. We had to do research for the government and we had to find out just exactly that question of what is polluting the waterways? What is the worst factor and how can we solve these factors? And because one of the waterways was being polluted and they needed to know why it's being polluted. So, and I, I was thinking about this thinking, well, I'll ask a question, and this is something that's not spoken about a lot, but I'm going to ask you a question and see if you can answer it before you watch the rest of this video. The question is, what is the limiting factor of why you keep getting algae in your aquarium? Okay. Choice A. Now, this is a little bit of a trick question, so I'm just letting you know. Choice A is nitrates. We hear a lot about nitrates and everything about the aquarium, and they're the ones who cause problems. But on the other hand, people are saying nitrates are needed for plants. Choice B is phosphates or phosphorus. This is what's in fish food. Uh, and... It's added in there as a preservative or whatever. Even the fish food that I showed you that was like $17 a container said it had no phosphates, but yet it had phosphates in the food or phosphorus in the food, whatever, whichever one. Choice C, both of them are equally as important as the other one is because they both will cause a problem in your aquarium. So you have A, nitrates, B, phosphates, or phosphorus, C, both of them are equally as well. They're, they're both going to cause a problem. When I come back, I'm going to give you the scientific answer to that question and the correct answer to that question compared to what other videos are telling you. In fact, I don't think anybody is telling you at least not on any of the videos I see. The answer to that question and the truth 
about that question I just asked you. How do you stop getting algae in your aquarium? And other people have no problems, and some have all the problems in the world. Even if they're using a BCB basket or they're using a slow-moving plenum. We'll, I'll get back to you on that soon. Well, let's get to the answer to the question I just asked. Something that's not really told the hobbyists, or maybe there's information that should be explained a little more in detail. And in the next few videos, we're going to get into equations, uh, bacteria equations. Uh, we're going to get into things like this. But you're going to start finding out the truth of why you are getting algae constantly. So the person that makes the claim that uh, I have a tank and it's uh, 40 parts per million. I'm make, getting this number. I heard people even write it. And I don't have any algae problems. And you have another person who says, you know, I have nitrates of only 10 parts per million or 20 parts per million. And I'm already seeing beard algae. I'm already starting to see some brown algae grow on my leaves and things like this. Why? What am I doing wrong? Well, there's several factors of what could be done wrong. We all know that. One is you could be adding way too much food. Your fish are not eating all the food, consuming it. Even if they are, they're creating a lot of waste. A lot of hobbies will say, well, nitrates are needed for plants, and nitrates, well, they're, they're something that, uh, it's needed, but it's not needed. And this is something that hobbies keep getting confused on, of uh, nitrates, and they keep convincing each other that nitrates are very important for plants. Phosphates, they say, well, plants need phosphates. They need phosphates in very, very little trace amounts. And because most of our foods have phosphates in them, they are going to get phosphates and micro element. That is a micro element, not a macro, but a micro element, phosphates. So, the limiting factor of why you keep getting algae, which people are not told because they're constantly told the same thing. The first thing that comes out of people's mouth is nitrates. And I bet you a lot of people put down A. The truth of the whole fact of it is, it's B, phosphates. Not nitrates and phosphates. You can have high nitrates and very, very little phosphates, and you'll have very little problem with algae. The studies that we conducted and found out, and I'll drive this point home, phosphates used to be put in our uh, dishwashing powders, remember? And liquids that we put in our dishwashers. The FDA has stopped that and said no more phosphates. That's why when you get a uh, dishwashing powder like Cascade or something and you'd put it in it wouldn't work as well anymore people say hey how come I'm putting these liquids and these powders in my dishwasher and the dishes aren't coming out clean because they eliminated phosphates because what the government found out was phosphates were the main cause of algae problems it wasn't nitrates it was phosphates and this is something that, when you do tests, everyone says if you have one part per million of ammonia, that's bad. If you have one part per million of nitrites, that's bad. But if you had one part per million of nitrates, that's not bad. That's good. 
But if you had one part per million of phosphates, that's bad. You're never told this. How many videos you see out there that explain this to you? The phosphate test in freshwater system, not so much uh, salt water, because salt water have learned that you have to keep nitrates and phosphates down as low as you can humanly possibly get them. It's no different than a fresh water system. You need to keep phosphates down to 0 0.05 or something like just like a salt water aquarium. And I will explain to you. It's a 7 to 1 ratio. So if you have seven parts of nitrate, it takes one part of phosphates, boom, you'll have an algae problem. Your tank will start growing algae, it'll start growing beard algae, uh, hair algae, it will start getting diatom algae, it will uh, get more and more silico, uh, silica algae growing on your glass, spot algae. These algaes will grow, spot algae will grow even very, very low phosphates, but it doesn't really become a big serious problem, so you shouldn't worry about it. But it's because the nitrates. So you imagine if it takes one part per million of phosphates to upset your aquarium with only seven parts per million of nitrates, you are going to start having algae problems. And I know a lot of people out there, uh, if you watch my videos on the nitrogen cycle, if they're not completing the nitrogen cycle because of what we've been told that uh, nitrates is the end byproduct, if you're not completing the cycle like it's supposed to be, those nitrates are going to build up in the aquarium and you're going to start getting algae problems. But what people think is, well, everyone's telling me it's the nitrates causing the problem. It's not. Your phosphates are causing the problem. That's why when you look at my aquarium and it has no algae problems and I did the test right in front of you a couple of videos ago, nitrates were five parts per million, but phosphates were 0 0.06 parts per million. Now let me tell you something about phosphates. They're very, very important. And you probably have never been told that for freshwater aquarium. Go out and buy yourself a nice HANA test kit because every time you use that phosphate test kit you calibrate it by putting the vial in there empty it calibrates itself now you put the vial in there after you put the chemical in there to test for phosphates so every time you use it you calibrate that test kit the liquid ones are so hard to read I am going to say don't waste your money a twenty dollar test kit just buy a HANA. Now, I'm not promoting HANA. All I'm saying is I don't work for HANA. I don't sell their equipment. But don't screw around with some cheap test kit that you can't read correctly because you need to get down to the nitty-gritty of phosphates. You need to get into very, very low numbers. And the only way I found out to get in those numbers is either you're going to use a HANA or you're going to use a Lamont or you're going to use a very expensive test kit to get down on those low numbers. When people say, I set up my aquarium and it did fine for years, all of a sudden um, I start getting algae problems. It's because maybe your nitrates were okay or very low, all of a sudden your phosphates started rising little by little or your phosphorus started rising out of control and your system wasn't taking care of it. It's very easy. You know, a lot of people, they make a aquarium and they think it's easy, but owning an aquarium is chemistry. Let's face facts. A simple five gallon tank is chemistry. You we're dealing with an environment that we are not used to reproducing. We're dealing with an aquatic environment. So it's not like putting a bird in a cage. We're trying to create this environment, have it stabilize itself. We're not trying to get it uh, eutrophication. We're not trying to create that. Definitely, we're trying to stay away from that. We're not trying to warp the system. And we're trying to take care of all this chemistry 
And if we don't think about the chemistry of the aquarium, we are going to fail with the aquarium. Your animals are going to get sick. They're not going to be healthy. Your plants are going to start dying or, or um, you're going to have algae problems. And a lot of times when I ask people that one question, what are your phosphates? Uh, I don't know. I know what my nitrates are. That's not answering the question. It's the phosphates that are going to cause the algae problems. Not your nitrates so much. Phosphates are going to do it. That's why the United States government has banned phosphates and a lot of your fertilizers and a lot of your cleaning liquids and everything because that phosphates is the problem for algaes, even in the ocean. Phosphates are the problem. And it doesn't take much in phosphates to disrupt the whole ecosystem that you're trying to create. But constantly people are fighting with aquariums or planted aquariums and things may go well for them for a while, then all of a sudden it collapses. My plants didn't do well, this didn't do well. As you see in my videos, if you're gonna put fertilizers in, you should have almost a dosing system. Once again, instead of just squirting a bottle in, you need very little of those fertilizers. Very little. Because they also cause problems of nitrates and phosphates. And you need a system to take care of those phosphates. As I showed you in my other video, my phosphates in my aquarium are 0.06. And I made the comment, a lot of saltwater hobbies would love to have that. But there are rules that you must follow. You bend the rules and you could wind up failing only because you thought you could bend the rules in your favor. I don't want to put three inches of substrate or four inches of substrate in my tank. I think one will be enough. You're bending the rules. This is nothing new. This has been known to build an aquarium and put at least three inches of substrate or four inches of substrate into it. This is old, old, old technology that we got from sewage treatment facilities. It has changed for some reason, and now we still, to this day, have people struggling with a hobby that they shouldn't be struggling with. Nobody should be struggling in this hobby but they still are today because misinformation is being gotten out of there and given to people, and they are struggling still to this day. We have the success story, and we have the failure story. And what people don't understand is that in an aquarium, to be successful, you almost need like seven pounds of plants if you decide to have like 320 grams of fish. So that's how much in plants you would need to take care of a system for uh, that many grams of fish load that you would have in that. That's a lot of plants. That's more like something you would do with a pond than you would with an aquarium. So when you start having problems with the aquarium, the first thing you need to check out, of course, we're always told, check out your ammonia. Check out your nitrites, right? We may have a test for nitrates. We may not. See what your nitrates are. Did you hear anyone, anyone out there in the video say, next, check out your phosphates? Because phosphates is what's probably causing your beard algae. You need to get rid of the phosphates because you can have a lot more nitrogen and not cause a big disruption in your aquarium than you can phosphates. And think how low the phosphates have to be if it's a seven to one ratio. If you only need seven parts per million of nitrogen and one part per million of phosphates, phosphates is what's causing your algae problems. Not the nitrates. It's going to be phosphate. So you need to get the phosphates down so you have some leeway with the nitrogen. 
all food has phosphates in it or phosphorus in it, it is a preservative. We don't put it in stuff anymore, phosphates. We are trying to keep it out of our fertilizer and stuff because it's screwing up our waterways. It's screwing up our oceans. Phosphates, you'll, he you'll hear it. You'll read about it. Phosphates are causing the problem. Same thing in your aquarium. Every day you feed, you're adding nitrates and phosphates into your aquarium. But you never hear anyone really talk about in the freshwater aquarium about phosphates. Then we hear about the poor guy who says, I'm starting to get beard algae. Do you know what your phosphates are? No, I have no clue. Or I have a fish tank. It's becoming older. And now I'm starting to get algae problems. Because this is the time when the whole ecosystem starts collapsing because phosphates begin to start rising and rising and rising. You're not testing for it. And, and that's really a shame because everyone should be told the most important test to take on your tank is ammonia, nitrites, and phosphates. But you're never told that. And as long as phosphates creep up, it doesn't take very much nitrogen, boom, that's it. You're going to have an algae problem. Beard algae is one of those problems. Okay, I'd rather put up with a little bit of spot algae or silica algae that's growing on my aquarium glass than I would algae like uh, beard algae growing all over my plants and make it unsightly. Watch the videos. Look at their close-ups of their tank, the people who are giving you advice. They're not as neat as you think, and they'll have algae all over their aquarium because they're not testing for phosphates, and they're doing nothing about getting rid of the phosphates. I have shown you videos about a slow-moving plenum, a BCB, how it deals with phosphates. I, t I told you about the phosphate absorbers, I've tried to get you into learning more about phosphates because that's what's going to cause your algae problems. Get rid of the phosphates, you'll get rid of your algae problem. Getting rid of nitrates doesn't mean you're going to get rid of your algae problems. That's why when I did the video and showed you right off the bat, 0.06 parts per million. You need to get your phosphates extremely low, even in fresh water. And a lot of people say phosphates aren't that important. They're extremely important. This is what screws up our water systems. This is the research I've done for the government. Phosphates. Get it out of your aquarium. You gotta set your aquarium up correctly. If you need help, Buy some of the phosphate pads, start putting them in your filters, and you're going to end up with a lot less problems of algae. But I know people aren't going to listen. They're going to say, well, I was told it's nitrate, and plants are going to use the nitrate. I don't care about the nitrates, because it doesn't take very much nitrates to cause a problem if your phosphates are even one part per million. And if I told you I have one part per million of ammonia, first thing you'd be saying, oh, that's terrible. you, you got to get that lower than that. Or if I said I had one part per million of nitrites, oh, that's terrible. you got to get rid of that. Well, I'm telling you right now, if you have one part per million of phosphates, that's terrible. That's bad. You're going to have algae problems. No doubt. That is what screws up this planet. That is what's screwing up the ocean. That is what's screwing up Florida. It's runoff from phosphates. It's causing algae problems. It screws up every lake, every pond out there from fertilizers that carry nitrates, but also phosphates that turn around and get to be in very extremely low numbers. And boom, the whole system goes out of whack because it doesn't take much in nitrogen. And the proof is in the pudding. You'll see some of the comments that people have written. I have 40, 40 parts per million of nitrates. I don't have an algae problem because they may not have any phosphates. And soon as their system starts building up phosphate, because they're probably watching what they're feeding their fish, 
They're probably measuring it very accurately. They're probably watching how the fish eat and don't overfeed them. Don't overfeed them with foods that have a lot of phosphates in it. Phosphates are your enemy if you want to keep algae at bay. It's that plain and it really is that simple. Look at my aquarium. But I have no phosphates. I'm just, like I said, saltwater aquarius would be happy to have that. One guy even made mention that he's been using a plenum like this in his saltwater aquariums for over 12 years with no problems because we seem to get away from certain things to do other things that we're told and all it did was mess up what we did in the past. And I know people say, well, I have made comments that under gravel filters are old school. Everything in our aquarium is old school, if you think about it. Everything is old school. Our pumps, our air pumps have been around for, for ever before I was alive. You know, sponge filter has been around how long? That's old school. Everything is old school. All we've done is improve it to make it better. But be honest with you, it's all old school. Under gravel filters, they're old school. Yeah, but they worked. They really did work. Slow moving plenum, a plenum, it works. But we got away from these things. Because I even see today, I see it today. People make an aquarium, put the rocks in, boom, pour the bag in. What happened? How did we get to that point? And if they don't put a ton of plants in, then their nitrates and phosphates are going off the charts and they're getting algae problems. And I bet you, if you have an algae problem and you're getting beard algae or something, go out and buy yourself a phosphate test kit. Test your phosphates. See where they are. And then you're going to realize exactly what I'm telling you. Even at very low phosphates, you can still have beard algae and the other algaes because it doesn't take very much nitrates to trigger off the algaes. Not at all. Like I said, one part per million of phosphates, it only takes seven parts per million of nitrates. That's your limiting factor right there. So if you want to get rid of your algae, go out, buy yourself a real nice HANA test kit that will test your phosphate. Test your phosphate. In conclusion, uh, I want to thank everybody for watching the video. I hope you learned something maybe a little different than what you're constantly being told about uh, the controlling factor of our algae problems is phosphate and not nitrates. And uh, I hope you have better success in understanding why things happen in our aquariums that aren't being told to you. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Happy fish keeping.